Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and today we are going to be doing a fun video where I am going to be basically making a sort of not really ranking, but kind of buying order, or at least what I would suggest the order of expansions you get for my favorite board game, Root. Which, if you have not heard about Root, you should probably learn a little bit about the game before watching this video, but my channel is really good for that. I've got a ton of content regarding this game. It is my favorite game on the planet. So let's go ahead and talk about the expansions and what order should we really get these? Obviously, I'm not gonna put it up there, but the base game should be the first thing that you get. If you don't have the base game, then this is kind of a useless list to you. But the first expansion you should get after you've gotten the base game, maybe, maybe you've played a couple games of that. The first expansion I think you should get is the Underworld expansion. Now, the reason why you want to get the Underworld expansion here is because it comes with two new factions. You get a one militant faction, one insurgent faction. The Underground Duchy being that militant faction, very fun. You can go up against the cats with it, against the Eerie if you're just playing two player. Um, but also, you've got just kind of more options for multiplayer games with a new militant faction to add to the Duchy and the Marquis the Cat. Also, it comes with two new maps, and I think that's one of the reasons why I think this is really, really great, because you get the lake map, you get the mountain map, that's gonna have so much variability in your games, trust me. The other thing is the Corvid Conspiracy. I believe it to be the easiest faction in the game to teach. I can teach it so easily, so I think it's really good to get that one early on, because teaching people Root is already kind of a tough challenge, so, get the Corvid Conspiracy in there. It's gonna make your life way easier. And the second expansion that I believe you should get is the Exiles and Partisans deck. The reason why I think you should get the Exiles and Partisans deck next is because that base deck in Root, it has a, it's it's just like a higher cost of card kind of amount for, for pretty much all the cards. Like all the cards cost a lot. And so in order to promote more crafting in your games, the Exiles and Partisans deck is a great option for you. The other thing is that there are favored cards in that base deck. They're fun to play with for a little bit. I mean, they definitely have good storytelling, but one thing that I've noticed is that they don't usually create feel good moments. A lot of people get very angry and sad when one of those is played. It kind of just destroys everything in every color of clearing. So the Exiles and Partisans deck actually adds Partisans, which are a very interesting type of card, it kind of replaces the favors in a way. And also the general cost of cards is a lot lower so you can you're gonna have more crafting in your games and I think that's important skill kind of to learn in root um, so I think the exiles and partisans deck is the next obvious choice um, but also if you want more information like detailed breakdown of these decks I have a video on it so I'll go ahead and link it above but also check it out in the description down below Okay, so the third expansion that I recommend getting is going to be the Riverfolk expansion. This comes with two factions. It comes with the Lizard Cult um, as well as the Riverfolk Company, both factions that I would deem to be a little bit more tricky to learn and get but so, so worth it. Uh, I find them both to be very, very fun. I think it's good at this point to add a more complex faction to learn, like the Lizard Cult. They're one of the weirdest ones that you'll encounter. They just kind of play differently with the revealing card mechanics. So um, I, I think, well, I guess the Underground Duchy. So here we go. So see, the Underground Duchy already have the revealing card mechanics. So it's kind of softly brought you in to the Lizard Cult also having that, but also just being super bizarre. Uh, this also comes with three new Vagabonds, which, what was it? The Scoundrel, the Arbiter, and the Vagrant are the uh, Vagabonds that come in the Riverfolk expansion. So the Vagrant's the best Vagabond ever. Nobody can, can fight with me on that. So you get the best Vagabond ever now. Uh, so I think this is a perfect time to kind of introduce more Vagabonds. You get two more Insurgent factions. I think this is this is good, this is good. So fourth expansion, now we're just gonna go straight to the Marauders expansion. You get some Hirelings, you get the base game Hirelings. So that's really good because uh, hirelings are a way to kind of pad lower player counts. So you get like a kind of 
Marquise de Cat version, a Vagabond version, an Eerie version, and a Woodland Alliance version in this box, and that can help kind of add in a mock player at those lower player counts. But also, but also, you get two new factions, and they're both militants. You get the Lord of the Hundreds, which are kind of warring rats, but you also get the uh, the Badgers. Why can I not think of their name? Keepers in Iron. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You get the Keepers in Iron, which is one of the most complex factions to learn in the game. And this is the reason why I would have this at expansion number four, because to me, I think you need a really good understanding of the game in order to learn the Badgers well. And I personally, I've taught this game dozens and dozens and dozens of times. I love teaching this game. But one thing I've noticed is that Teaching the Badgers is one of the hardest things to do to a new player, even to somebody who's played the game a couple of times. They are very much a difficult faction to grok when you're first learning them. The Lord of the Hundreds, though they are much easier, they are still quite a bit of a text heavy faction. Like they've got a lot of text if you think about it. So both of these factions, I do believe this is a perfect spot to introduce them now. Once you've gotten the three expansions before, I think it's perfect time to add these ones to your game nights. All right, so fifth expansion, where are we going with the fifth expansion? So at this point, it is probably going to change a little bit. Uh, oh, actually, no, no. I think the next expansion is going to be the Vagabond expansion because this is going to round out all of the available faction content options in the game now here. Oh, also, I didn't mention this, but the Marauder expansion also has add set, which is a great way to kind of balance some of these earlier factions a little bit, but also a new setup module. But the thing is you can actually print out those rules for add set earlier. So I still think you should wait till the fourth expansion for that. But fifth expansion, we've got the Vagabond expansion. This comes with cute little meeples for all your Vagabonds, but also comes with three new Vagabonds to play the game with. And those are going to be the Harrier, the Adventurer, and the Ronin. Um, just more Vagabonds, right? And also these adorable little meeples. I think it's really cheap, so you can get that for a really good price. And I think that would be a good fifth expansion to your root games. Now from here, I believe that we are getting into some kind of tricky territory where depending on what kind of player you are, you might want to go a different direction. If you are more of a solo player, you would probably go for the solo content here. If you are playing a lower player counts or, you know, group multiplayer games, you might want to go for landmarks or hirelings. My personal opinion on this one is going to be you'd want to get the hirelings box here. This comes with the rest of the hirelings. Um, there's actually a couple of mini expansions. I'm just gonna kind of put them all in, but basically buy some of those hirelings. They basically add, like I said, more padding to the lower player count games. I find them really great at three player. They're very fun, but they just come with all these cool little meeples and cool little rules. It's just stuff you can add to kind of the end of your game here. Uh, and then I think like once you've played out all of this content, like it's going to take you a long time to get to this point, but seventh expansion at this point, I would say the landmarks. Um, and once again, this is barring if you're, if you're a solo player, I would probably have gotten these two expansions a little sooner, but just personally, I, I don't like I'm doing this for me. So for me, this is not going to go up as high, but the landmarks expansion at seven. So this is basically like a little module that basically adds these landmarks. So there are all these little different things that you can add to maps and they add cool mechanics and cool new rules. So this can make the existing four maps that you have very different. So now you can have the lost city, which counts as any suit, um, or you could add the ferry to any map, which is really fun. So there are just a lot of different ways now to play the game with these landmarks. So I would put that at number seven. All right. So solo players, the first Clockwork expansion is a bit easier to learn than the second Clockwork expansion. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold these both up as the eight and ninth picks for expansion buy. These are a way to play Root solo or to add a bot to your two player games, um, which is what me and Kate did actually quite a bit at some point. Um, now with the hirelings existing, we don't do it as much, I'll be honest. This is also a way to solo completely Root. So if you want to do that, and if you are interested in soloing Root, I do have um, a link in the description about a channel, Give Pause Hobby, that has done a ton of amazing work for the Root community. I just wanted to give them a shout out about the Root solo scene. Got the links down there. Um, but yeah, that is kind of the order in which I would say you should get these root expansions and why kind of I think you should. But 
We're going to go number one, Underworld Expansion, then go ahead and buy the Exiles and Partisans deck, Riverfolk Expansion, Marauder Expansion, Vagabond Expansion, the Hirelings box, the Landmarks Expansion, and Clockwork 1, Clockwork 2. That is it. What order would you get these expansions or maybe what order did you buy these expansions? I am curious to find out and would love to hear from you. So if you have any of that information, go ahead and drop it down below. I'd love to chat with you there. But hey, that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's go ahead and drop the beat.